Palama Pichicari, Santo Lino de Mari. Dina de Tosi, Dina de Tosi. Dina de Tosi. Welcome back to our stupid reaction to the idiots. I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. And you follow us on Instagram, Instagram Twitter, 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 Juicy Content, content. Instagram, so Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, 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 we are reviewing a cornucopia of reactionary confections. A our third Assamese yes. film, our second Rima Das film. Yep. Uh, this one is Bulbul can. Bulbul? I think so. Okay. Bulbul. It's probably much more pretty and. Uh, yeah, I don't know that. Bulbul. Yeah. Bulbul. <laughs> I don't think it's as southern as that one. Yeah. Bulbul. Bulbul. Hey, Bulbul, Bulbul can sing. <laughs> And it's sang. Sang. Yeah. Bobo. Go wash, Bobo. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Bobo can sing uh, by Rima Das, written by Rima Das, directed by Rima Das, cinematography by Rima Das, editor editor by Rima Das, production design Rima Das. All the roles by Rima Das. She was an incredibly shape shifting. There are some Dases in this. Well, like Village Rockstars, very much. It's a, it's a Das family production. Can I just say something, though? If there's ever a person, if you ever, like, man, I just don't have. The means, or or the production, or whatever, to make a film. Um, Rima Das might have some uh, questions for you. <laughs> As would Quentin, you know, because Quentin Tarantino was working at Blockbuster Video, and he was making his first films on his off weekends with whatever money he had. Mm -hmm. And when he ran out of money, he just stopped that weekend. And over the course of two years, just filming on the weekend with his friends. Made his first film. So yeah, you want to make a movie? Make a make your movie. That's exactly what you. That's just do it. Yep. Uh, but anyways, 100% uh, spoiler review. It's just how we like to do things. Go watch it. It's very short. Uh, 190, basically 190 minutes. I'm not 190. You mean 90 minutes? 90 minutes. Um, and it's on Netflix, at least in the United States. Yeah. Um, and just go support regional, smaller, independent cinema. Yeah. As well, from regardless of the region, whether it's Assamese, Gujarati, whatever. Just go support it. And so. watch them in their original language with yes. subtitles in the language you know. Uh, and yeah, if you haven't seen it, as always is the case, and let I me mean, just watch the movie first and then come back and hear the review. Because we don't want to spoil it for you, but when did this come out? Uh, 2018. Oh, so it's actually relatively recent. More recent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Your initial thoughts. Now yeah. I got a paragraph. Good. Um, someone could watch Bubble Can Sing and assume it is simply a depiction of rural life in an Indian village, or maybe assume that it, like village rock stars, is simply a coming-of-age story. Don't underestimate it like that. This is much more than a coming-of-age story. Mm. If village rock stars was about the quiet yearning inside of a maturing young woman who hopes to see her dreams come true, Bobo Can Sing is a silent screaming inside of every one of us, wishing to see our truest and best selves somehow survive the malicious assailing of our identities, in the name of unchallenged traditions, mindless legalisms, and fear-based superstitions. Mm. Um, I have more I want to share that I can read later on, mm. but for me, um, it's a movie that I, I have a lot to say, but just as a takeaway, I thought this movie was fantastic. Yeah, so yeah. did I. I actually think I, I enjoyed it more than- More than Village Rockstar. Me Stars. too. Well, I guess it, it's taking it, nothing away. No, it's just- all. You can relate more to this character than you can uh, the little girl, obviously, because one, some terrible stuff happened uh, in this uh, for multiple people uh, in this. Uh, like I said, if you haven't seen it, please, once again, stop, just go watch it. Once again, it's a short movie, just like Village Rockstars is, which is equally worthy of your time. They're, they're really, they're very complimentary yes. to each other, don't you think? Yeah, and uh, my, my wife watched it with me and she also watched Village Rockstars. Um, and she said she has a distinct style. Very. About, and I was like, I don't know if it's just because budgetary is that's the reason the style is right or right now obviously she's nah she's new and so it could just be these two that is because these are the only two of hers we've seen uh, but they are very complimentary they could e that could easily be this young girl's upbringing at the, at the beginning and then this is more of her yeah this is the more mature mm -hmm. incarnation of the same kind of an issue but again like i said where the other one was more about 
the coming of age of a singular girl. Yeah. I felt like this was a much more universal story. Uh, and it was also um, a lot... <laughs> Village Rockstars was very subtle. Mm -hmm. This was even more subtle. Mm -hmm. There were some lines in this that were deeply profound that if you weren't really paying attention, you could easily just walk... I could see people watching this movie and thinking to themselves, well, that was nice. It just depicted, you know, a little rural village in India. Mm -hmm. And because they weren't paying attention. Mm -hmm. There's some deep, yeah. deep stuff and going it, on. And it had a lot to say. Not yeah. just about one subject either. Yep. Like that that whole conversation. Well, it, was a, it was a lot. And it just made you... It, I think movie we watched not too long ago was also like that. It was like, culturally, it was like, what? <laughs> For a, a, a lot of times. But that whole conversation when the men were sitting around mm -hmm. talking about um, love and like... The Shiva yes. and, and and all that. Yes, kind of I wrote stuff. I wrote and down the quote, and then the women talked about that conversation. Yes, and um, they're like they they're almost like putting themselves down, like saying, "What well, what do we know?" Yeah, they said at one point the men having that conversation. They said they they meaning the young people are misguided by modern thoughts. It's not correct before marriage, and I wrote down correct according to what. Mm -hmm. You know that the whole well, yeah. When they started beating them up, the that that whole that one was a wonderfully shot. I would give Rima Das all the credit for mm -hmm. making that a very uncomfortable scene, and she drug it out. She drug that out on time. purpose, on purpose. Which, to her credit, was yeah, a fantastic choice. Agreed. But it was difficult to watch because you're like, okay, they're gonna do this in a little cutaway. They kind of stayed on there for a few minutes, and just like a bunch of stuff was said, and you're like, wait, what? What? And they I like just, they were just with you, but then the guy said he was like, "You're destroying," or I think it was like, "You're destroying our culture," or "You're destroying yes, our you're destroying our, you're destroying our culture." I think is the word he used. Yeah, some something ridiculous. It, yeah, it was something. And what I loved about that sequence was that it wasn't just blind, unbridled fury of everybody, because she stayed on it so long, and the way that they were going about it. Mm -hmm. Rima Das made you know they were this was not just a momentary lapse of reason. This is the way they do things. Yep. When you break this rule, this is the response you get and you deserve it. And it was hard to watch that. And then the the subsequent conversation at the school that they were arguing yeah, they deserve to be expelled because think of the reputation of the school. Right. That these people were just together. Right. And that is so awful. It, it, it was, I mean, we know it's cultural and I totally understood what she was trying to say. Of and course. I get it. Of course. But it's still to, especially a Western modern mindset, it's just so, for lack of a better term, foreign. Yeah. That, 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 that mindset of, wait, these kids are... They like each other. They yes. weren't doing anything bad outside of to being together. And, and contextually, you're using the word foreign in one of the uses because it has two uses yeah. that can be used. Mm -hmm. Foreign can mean from another people group and land where you're a foreigner. Mm -hmm. You mean foreign mm -hmm. in terms of that is very different than what I would expect normal behavior to be. Yeah. And we've, we've seen that in other films before. Oh, of that, course. That, and so but, like, it wasn't, I, I wasn't confused by it. And I, I wrote this about um, two things, that the movie shows how uh, universally, how beliefs, worldview, biases, prejudices, and superstitions are so deeply ingrained into the very fabric of every moment of our everyday lives and the act of changing mindsets is as difficult and revolutionary as the transforming of an entire culture mm -hmm. and that there are more prisons without bars than with them mm -hmm. um the 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 subtlety of something just the symbolism for example of them looking at the pictures with them in front of the taj mahal or by the empire state building not just that they made those pictures that was them dreaming but the fact that he says to her we need to hide these mm -hmm. in fact the very thoughts we're having mm -hmm. are dangerous we can't let them know we're having these progressive thoughts. Because if we do, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble for it. Uh, I, I just thought it was such an intelligent mm -hmm. movie that again, like so many movies we've seen like this, the people who actually need to see it and learn from it the most are gonna be the ones who see it the least. And that's, that's bothersome to me. Uh, because the other thing is that 
one of the things it talks about is the difference between young people versus older people. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this down. What young people lack in experience and wisdom, they make up for in vision and daring. Mm -hmm. Old eyes see the world for what it's always been and what it ought to remain. But young eyes see the world for what it is and what it ought to become. And this is why getting old has nothing to do with biological age. Getting old is a mindset. Mm -hmm. And Einstein said, great spirits have always encountered violent opposition from mediocre minds. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the silent scream. Uh, there's so many movies. I asked this of Indrani. Like, think of a movie. There's many of them that have in it a person who is a great spirit, but the culture and the society around them just destroys them. Mm -hmm. uh, and often destroys them before their voice is even heard. That's the kind of film I think Bubble can sing. Yeah, it and I think he did a great... Sorry, I'm trying to look for a quote here uh, that it just reminded me of a David Bowie quote. I think it's from Changes. Uh, uh, he said, but the, but the days that seem... Uh, but still the days seem the same, and these children that you spit on as they try to change their world are immune to your consolations. Uh, and I can't find the rest. It <laughs> cut off. Yeah, it just cut off. But uh, that's a great quote. Hold on. Mm. It's somewhere... Uh, yeah. They are immune to your constellations. They're quite aware of what they're going through. Once again, if you if you don't know who David Bowie is, I'm sure you do. He's a worldwide artist. But it's possible. Um, but it's possible. Um, he he has a bunch of uh, great songs. But yeah, that's that's one of my favorite quotes of any song. Uh, yeah, is uh, because it's so powerful then, and it's still powerful now. Yeah. because it's a lot of times older people try to control um, the world. Mm -hmm. uh, in every <laughs> culture, really, uh, and and the younger people who should really be the ones in charge and and trying to change and to move the move forward. move forward, but a bunch of people don't want anything to change. Um, so it kind of goes to this film as well. Yeah, very but much. I thought that not only was Bobo a great character, I thought her friend, the gay the gay character, beautiful, heartbreaking, because you know why he ran away. Of course, right? Because. Uh, I was actually happy that he did because I didn't. One, I didn't. I didn't catch on that he was the lookout at that time. Not, not me neither. Um, but when he ran away, I was like, okay, good, because I thought they like if they found out that he was there and that he was gay, they were gonna they kill, kill him. him. And then when she got mad at him, I was like, really? Can you? Can you blame? Look what he did to you. What do you think they would do to a gay man? Right. Exactly. Like. <laughs> exactly. And again, she's she's a little kid, but that's why this film was so complex and so there was a lot of layers to it. A lot talking about kids growing up and at least in this Assamese culture and then um, uh, also the adults who who perpetuate it and the fact that these adults who punish these kids they shouldn't be shocked that this little girl I believe killed herself yes she that's, did. that's what that's exactly what, what I thought yeah um, like you ridicule this girl for being a little girl right what do you expect her to do right <laughs> exactly <laughs> and I I love the metaphor of Bobo can sing because it represents everybody in the film and it represents the entire universal message that Rima Das I think is saying in the film mm -hmm. and that's that's the fact of you know her dad was the one who was pleading and saying she can really sing mm -hmm. she can sing mm -hmm. but everyone else was ridiculing her and whenever she tried to sing in front of them she understood understandably couldn't be herself because of the constant that she was getting yeah but when she's by herself and that's, that's the takeaway of if you really got to know somebody and get your prejudices and your assumptions and your cultural biases off, you'd realize that they actually are contributing something beautiful if you really took the time to get to know them like her, her, her dad did. Mm -hmm. But I also thought that Rima Das did a very good thing because while we want to be at the cutting edge of the forefront of the young and the progressive and those who are mm -hmm. revolutionary and evolving everything forward, yeah. There are things from the past that ought not be forgotten. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the film, when she's there and her mom's doing her hair, mm -hmm. and she just says to her very simply, you need to oil your hair. It looks like you don't care and it's damaged. Mm -hmm. Is a really great reminder of, you know what, we've been, we've been doing this all of our lives. And there are some things we've been doing that aren't rooted in superstitions and fears. Yeah. We do them because we've learned they're actually what's good for us. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Don't become like in the namesake. Yeah. Don't become like him where you forget where you came from and recognize, you know what? We've, 
some of the things we've been sticking to that are tried and true, if you just kick them all away, you really will be damaged and you're gonna lose the benefit of what you should have embraced yeah. in your, your heritage. But for the most part, it's the other end of that. Yeah. It's the oppression. Absolutely. Such a smart food. Yeah, it's a I, smart movie. I really enjoyed this film. Um, like I said, it's it's extremely short, uh, but um, just like Village Roxas, I think Village Roxas was uh, an 125 minutes. Yeah, and they're really just beautiful. An hour 25 minutes. Uh, they're very. Both of those films are very similar. We gave this as a compliment before. The Florida Project is t t the kind of feel mm -hmm. where more is shown than said, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but this one, again, had a, a higher level maturity for me. And uh, the performances, I was reminded, because I'm sure a lot of these folks are not experienced actors. And you can get some of the greatest performances from mm -hmm. experienced actors. Because they, oftentimes, training can be somebody's worst mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. Because they've learned enough to fake it. Yeah. And then they have to unlearn. That's, that's the path of training for an actor, is you start to train and you learn all these tools and then you have to forget them. Mm -hmm. And untrained actors, if they're directed right, don't have all that baggage. Mm -hmm. And I believed everybody in this, oh. the grieving mother. Yeah. I thought she was great. It was such a hard scene. One, I don't know why anybody wasn't giving her CPR. <laughs> I, I had the exact same I'm thought. I'm assuming, I was like, I guess they've, this part of the country hasn't often seen, because we grew up, even if you're not trained in CPR, you know what it looks like. Anybody who has been in water and drowned, mm -hmm. every movie, TV show, everything, it's, do you know CPR? Who's gonna do the CPR? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so I, I'm, I was just assuming, I was like, I guess they, they don't they know that. Don't. I don't know, because like anybody here, e even though it's, it is a dangerous thing if you don't know how to do you it. You gotta know how to do it. You, you do have to. Yeah. But like, even if like somebody didn't, I feel like somebody would try. Yeah. At least the, the compression, uh, you, cause mouth to mouth. Even now, they actually, they don't do mouth to mouth for CPR. That's actually been taken out yeah. of, uh, of CPR altogether. Yeah. So my wife's been trained in it a bunch of times because when she, you're a preschool teacher, which she was for a while, you had to be trained mm -hmm. to give CPR to them. Yep. Uh, she has to be CPR certified when she worked at the spa. Yep. So, I was once CPR certified. I worked for a first aid company for a few years and taught. Oh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was strange for me, but it was so sad. And I thought it was actually brilliant how she did it because she was just playing in the water and then the very next scene was somebody pulling her out of the water. Yeah. Like it was like, it didn't give you a second to even because I, I didn't think that's what she was doing. I thought she was just playing and then you were like, oh no. Mm -hmm. That was, so I thought it was, Rima Dosh, you're a fantastic director. You really are. You, you're such a fantastic director. I can't wait to, I, she's only done a few films, uh, which is really impressive. And I'm wondering if she's getting more budget. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know she, I don't even know if she wants it. Uh, well, but, and I want to know what other projects she has under her belt in terms of stuff she's written and is ready to, it to, looked to start to launch. It looks like after, because she did Village Rockstars was, well, Man with the Binoculars was apparently her first in 2016. Okay. Then Village Rockstars, then Bulbul Bul Can Sing, and then she, in 2019, she did Neighbors, and then 2020, she did something called Kids in Glory. It doesn't, uh, it, there's no even cast, but, and there's multiple directors. Maybe that's an anthology. Also, it's... Oh, it's a documentary. That's a documentary. Okay, so I'm guessing she partly directed Just, that. Uh, neighbors, the budget says a hundred dollars. Hmm. When she's not even a, a, a director, she must be producing that. Yeah. Thing. Oh no, it's multiple again. But anyway, but look, her next one's for each other. I don't know. It's it's just impressive that one she does everything, and. Because this, once again, looked beautiful. Mm -hmm. It looked like it was shot with a 4K camera. It looked like... <laughs> yeah, there was a scene where they were, the kids, at the opening of the film, he's up in the tree and she's down on the swing. And I knew by the way they had shot the thing, either it was perfect timing with her editing or she, she was a two camera shot. Mm -hmm. But when you do a two camera shot, you know, you can't just have two phones. You, you have to have the exact same camera. Yeah. And... Then when you're in the editing suite, you have to make sure color correction is exactly the same. But primarily, you need to be using the same equipment. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be obvious. So I don't know how many cameras <laughs> she utilized. But it's, um, it's just so impressive. Somebody who does it all herself. And then also is very new to come up with two films that are fantastic. That are this, this good. Um, so go support it. Uh, watch this film. Uh, and talk about Rima Das. Talk about Rima Das. Uh, let us know what's the next Asamese film. All three. 
have been fantastic. hundred percent out the man. They've been stellar uh, with uh, Ames, and then Ames I think is is the more fun one. It's it's definitely and unusual fun and unusual twisted. Yeah, so that that whole story is what really draws you in for sure. Uh, these artistically, of or cinematography wise and everything, are I think overall even better than that. But that story is obviously more intriguing to the uh, wider mass. Absolutely, agree. Uh, just because it's it's so unique and fun. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> agree. But they've all been so good. So uh, let us know what's the next Asami's film we should watch down below.